So today we are gonna talk about um, for the next uh, 40 minutes to 50 minutes or so, we're gonna talk about blood and body's defenses. Uh, I, I think it was six weeks ago or in the month of October that I um, done a microscopic life honor. So, okay. So this is again, a health and science category. It is a level two skill. Um, this is two of your seven awards that you can earn to earn the health master. If you can see there on your screen, there's a health master where you need to earn about seven honors in health and science. So if you have completed microscopic life and today you can complete blood and blood defenses, you have two already. And I'm sure there were other things that were taught on this platform, like digestion, sensors, and viruses, and all those things. You can put them all together and submit to your club director uh, or to your Pathfinder club, and you can earn this health master. That's a cool thing to have. I have that health master. I don't have my sash, but then, yeah, I have one of those. So it's really cool to have. So we're going to look at the things that we're going to learn today. So things like, what is blood? What are its major components? How do you identify them? What are the role of these blood cells? What are the functions of blood and diseases? Um, and what is your blood type? I'm sure each one of us have a blood type. Yes, we all have a blood type. Uh, what is yours? We'll come to that. So the use of blood as a symbol of God's saving power. If you look at the Bible, the Bible has many instances where blood has been referred to as God's saving power. What are they? And what are the good habits to stay healthy? That's an important thing, okay? Uh, we're gonna look at a new start. Some of you would have known about new start, but we will have a brief look into what's a new start as well. We're also gonna learn about the body's defense mechanisms. Some of the plants that can cause allergic reactions, as you know, the pathfinders are always out and about uh, who are very adventurous. Um, what are the things that you could come across that could cause some allergic reactions? What are the things that you need to keep yourself away from? What are infectious diseases? What are vaccines? What is COVID-19, the most happening subject in 2020? And what are the biblical refer references connected to cleanliness and control of disease? So these are the learning outcomes. Okay, let's go straight into it. Um, here you can see on your screen is an EDTA tube. Okay, forget uh, the EDTA. It's a big name, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. That's the anticoagulant that is used to keep your blood from clotting. So that's the purple tube there. If you take a blood and spin it, okay, you can see two clear parts over there. One is the straw colored or light yellow colored plasma. And at the bottom you see a um, little reddish blackish kind of a sediment that settled at the bottom. And those are the cells, okay? So the two main components of blood are plasma and cells. Right, so if you look at this picture again, which is more, plasma or the red cells? The picture clearly says that the plasma is much more than the red cells. The plasma constitutes about 40, sorry, 55% of the total blood volume and the blood cells are about 45%. And if you see in between, there's a little gray area that is called the Buffy coat. The, the bottom is the red cells where all the red cells are packed upon centrifugation and the little thing, the gray thing is called the Buffy coat where platelets and white cells are um, stuck together there. So what's in a plasma? Plasma is nothing uh, but uh, watery kind of a liquid uh, and it constitutes about um, different salt enzymes and proteins, proteins like albumin and fibrinogen. And if you're asking what is there in the bottom, the cells, I told you it's 45%, it constitutes white cells, red cells and Platelets. Okay, to the blood cells itself, there are three major types of blood cells. We heard that again. I'm gonna say that again now. White blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. So keep this in your mind. Three major types of blood cells. White blood cells, red cells, and platelets. If you look at your screen here, white blood cells could be further classified into five different types. We will see what they are. Now red cells remain what they are, platelets, as platelets. 
So white cells have five classes. One is the neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, lymphocyte, and the monocyte. Now look at the picture. Um, if you haven't seen this before, it may be a, a bit confusing. The structure of it, the granules, the nucleus, the cytoplasm. Okay, um, when I spoke about the microscopic life on her, I was talking about an animal cell and a plant cell. Each cell is encompassed now with a cell membrane, something that protects a cell. So they have a cytoplasm and a nucleus. Likewise, even the human cells, they've got a nucleus, a cytoplasm, and a cell membrane that contains the, the whole structure together. So in human, in a normal human, they have five types of white cells. Okay, um, okay these are the red cells. I'll go in a little bit of detail uh, when I come across this slide. Um, platelets, you see this great little thing there? Um, that's the graphic description uh, representation of a platelet. Right, back to the blood cells now. Now, where are the blood cells produced? As you can see, the major site of production is the bone marrow. Okay, um, so the bone marrow produces white cells, red cells, and platelets. And where do you think all these cells come from? Do they have anything else that they branch out from? Any idea where anybody, if you wanna put in your answers in your chat, did they come from different lineages or they all come from one single cell? What do you think? I gave you an answer out there. Yes, well, Ellen and Nicole have already answered um, cell division. Okay. They come, they come from stem cells. Ah, there you go. That's spot on. Okay, so yes, thanks for the answer. Stem cells, right? So stem cells are the most immature form of uh, cells, okay? That is called the pluripotent stem cell. You don't have to learn this, but you can simply call it as a mother cell, okay? That's one single cell from where we have the white cells that branch out, the red cells that branch out, and the platelets. So one single cell gives rise to white cells, red cells, and platelets, okay? So what do white cells do? The major function is to help fight infections by invading pathogens or foreign bodies. And the difference between white cells and the red cells and the platelets is that white cells have a nucleus. We will have a look at the picture and then you can, you can keep that in mind uh, clearly. Okay, what are the functions? Now the first cell that I have here is a neutrophil. Okay, it is again produced in the bone marrow. It constitutes the major white cell in the blood. About 50 to 85% of all your cells are neutrophils, okay? Um, the nucleus has about two to five lobes. In this picture, you can see there are one, two, three, four, almost four lobes. Do you see this uh, darkly stained, uh, uh, dark blue stained nucleus? All right, and the cytoplasm appears pink or lilac, okay? And its function is it ingests, kills, and breaks down the bacteria. That's the major function. Their role is to fight infections, especially the bacterial infections. Okay. What happens if there is, you don't produce enough of neutrophils in your body? What happens is you are susceptible for infection. You can get easily infected with, like say, for example, um, bacterial infections, or it could be fungal infections or viral infections. Okay. So what happens is if your immunity is low, if neutrophils are low, what happens is we have commensal bacteria, a normal bacteria that's within the, within the body that kind of a help keep, helps us keep healthy. What if there are no neutrophils? Now this normal commensal bacteria that are there in our body can begin to become pathogens, okay? So you have to be careful. So, all right, I have a little video to share. Uh, I couldn't embed it, but I could share it from my, uh, uh, I think I, I think I have to stop sharing, sharing the screen. Can I? Yes, you would probably need to, to stop sharing the screen and share the video. video. Okay, I'll give me a second. Okay. 
I'm just going to show you what uh, a neutrophil does. Um, Is the video playing? Yes, it, um, there is no sound. I don't yeah, know there's it... no sound. Okay. But you could see in the video, that's a neutrophil there. And you can see this little bacterium that's it's, it's being chased by this big neutrophil. And that's running away. It's running away. It's still, still trying to catch that. And then finally it engulfs it. Okay, that's typically what uh, a neutrophil does to an invading bacterium. Okay, uh, so let me stop sharing that and go back to our presentation. Are we back on track there, David? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh Lovely. So we've seen a neutrophil, what it does, uh, it typically ingests the invading uh, pathogen or bacteria. So it's the next one, you can just go into the presenter uh, mode uh, yeah. so that you can see a bigger picture if that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. So the next cell is the eosinophil, again, produced in the bone marrow. It constitutes less than 5% of the total white blood cells, about 1% to 4%. It has two nucleus. Uh, it's got a shape of a spectacular. You know, have you seen the aviator glasses? Okay, the two lobes connected by a little string in between. So that's the shape of the nucleus of an eosinophil. What's different here is the cytoplasm here is packed full of orange red granules. This is how we differentiate. By looking down the microscope, we look at the, a cell like that. Ah, that's an eosinophil. That's a neutrophil. That's a lymphocytes. Okay, so these are the characteristics of an eosinophil. They are bispectacle shaped. The cytoplasm is orange red in color because of all those granules. Um, and the nucleus again up here, are blue in color. Uh, the role here is a defense against tissue parasites. Okay, if you have, say for example, you have um, parasites like, um, say for example, tapeworm, um, tinea solium, or beef tapeworm, tinea saginata, or if you have a roundworm or hookworm, lower lower, or any of these um, um, nematodes, if you have any of these tropical diseases, your eosinophil count will go high. Why? Because the eosinophils are gonna try to attack these parasites, uh, the, uh, these tissue parasites. That's why the count goes up. Okay, they're involved in other allergic reactions like um, pollen. Have you ever uh, seen people sneeze uh, when they go out or they have ready uh, or to say watery eyes because of pollen, pollen allergy. Have you heard about that? Yes. So yeah, what happens then is again, you have allergic reactions and then you see eosinophils count goes up if you do a blood test on them. Also people who are suffering from asthma, you could have a high eosinophil count. The next granular, granular site is called the basophil. Okay, it's again produced in the bone marrow. Look at the picture. Uh, the color is quite uh, quite different to other two cells that we have seen. It's got two to three lobes of nucleus, but the cytoplasm is packed full of blue black granules. This is how we identify a basophil. It's got blue black granules, um, and its role it plays a role in inflammatory response by secreting histamine. Okay, it occurs in smallpox, chickenpox, hypothyroidism, uh, and also if you have a disease conditions like chronic myeloid leukemia, you have basophilia or increased numbers of basophils. Um, sorry, I'm gonna use a lot of medical technology. Um, if, you, if, you, if you don't understand anything, uh, put a question in your, in your comment chat, uh, chat there or also on Facebook. Uh, and I will take all your questions at the end of my presentation. So feel free to ask any questions that come, comes across. I'm very happy to answer those. So the next uh, cell is called lymphocyte. It's again produced in the bone marrow and also northern uh, from thymus. It's mononuclear, mononuclear meaning one single nucleus. There is no branches of the nucleus, one single nucleus. You see, see the big blue uh, structure in the middle, which occupies the whole cell, that's the nucleus. 
and it's got three different um, types of uh, lymphocytes. One are the, they are B, lymphocy, uh, B cells, T cells, and the NK cells are also called as the natural killer cells. Now B cells are the antibody secreting cells. They are also known as the memory cells. The T cells take part in cell mediated immunity. If you have tumors or pathogens, T cells are the ones that are attacked. And NK cells also play a similar role to T cells, but they also play a role in cell mediated immunity. Mind you, if you look, use a microscope look on a blood film examination, you can't differentiate between a T cell, B cell, and an NK cell. They all look the same, okay? But there's a special typing called the flow cytometry or immunophenotyping, okay? That's a different field altogether. You can differentiate them. But if you look using a microscope, you can see them as neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and lymphocytes on their own, but you can't save their B cells from T cells. All right, moving on to the next cell. It's the monocyte. Monocyte again is produced in the bone marrow. It is the largest cell of all the classes of white cell. Okay, it's, it's huge. Um, uh, it's, it constitutes about two to eight percent of white cells. And it is the shape of a magnet. Look at the top of this a picture that I put a, a horseshoe. You know where a horseshoe goes? The feet of a horse or, the shoe, or it's in the shape of a magnet. So that is the shape of the nucleus. And its cytoplasm has got blue gray kind of a cytoplasm and its main role is in body's defense against fungal infections, bacterial infections and removes dead and dying body cells. Again, its role is again, if there's any dead cells, it gobbles them up, okay? It acts like a macrophage, okay? That's a little bit about the white cells. Now, if you look into your worksheet, um, uh, I've given, I put down all the classes of classes of the cells there. So print out your worksheet and then fill up as you go along. Or if you have it with you, wait, fill it, fill in as you go along, and label the cells that has been asked in the worksheet. Okay, the next one is the red blood cells. They are produced in the bone marrow again, and they are discs or biconcave shape. If you look at that, there sometimes they are referred to as a donut shape. Okay, now the shape is produced in such a way that, you know, these red cells uh, travel from the pump from the blood through your veins to every uh, part of your body. If you look to the tip of your, 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 your hands, to your brain, to your ears, to your nose, everywhere, to your legs, every part of the uh, body is connected and this, these red cells play a vital role. They carry oxygen to them, okay, because your tissues need oxygens to survive. And they take out in exchange carbon dioxide. We, um, we inhale oxygen, okay, the oxygen is uh, distributed through the red cells, and then they take back carbon dioxide to be exhaled out, again, left into the open air. And they have no nucleus, unlike the white cells, they do not have a nucleus. Um, these are also responsible for the blood groups. Okay, when you say I am O positive or B positive or AB positive or whatever, okay, there are different types of blood groups. How do you get those blood types? Because they type the antigen. Each red cell carries an antigen specific for that uh, blood group. Say for example, my blood group is O positive. Why? Because my red cells have an antigen that expresses O antigen. Do you get me? Okay, we will get into a little detail when we speak about the blood groups, okay? So these red cells are responsible for the blood groups that you and I have. They have a total lifespan of 120 days. Okay, after that, they're destroyed. And their main role, as I told you, is the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And just try to keep an eye on time. Okay, question time. So why is the blood red in color? Anybody? Now it's time uh, for us to uh, type some answers in the chat, isn't it? Yes. So friends and those of you who are watching us on, on Facebook, please uh, try to give us uh, some of your thoughts. Why is the blood red in color? Okay, we've already got Ellen and Nicole really 
uh, following uh, here and there first to respond here on Zoom. It contains hemoglobin, which is red. Okay. Um, is there any other um, answer, friends, that you may may have? Um, it seems that uh, that's the only answer that we've got at the moment, Sunny. Okay, let's go on. And that's the right answer. Well done. So because of the presence of hemoglobin, our blood is red, okay? Well we done, Ellen and Nicole, well done. <laughs> well done there again. Thank you for your answer, that's great. So because of uh, the presence of hemoglobin, okay? Your our blood is red in color. Um, of course, once it comes out to the exposure of oxygen, there you go, you can see the blood red in color. Uh, what does the lack of iron in diet lead to? Anybody? Okay, when we don't have enough of iron in, in, in our diet. diet, it leads to a reduced hemoglobin production. Uh, production. So, oh. what does that lead to? I'm looking at a specific disease name, if you have heard about it. But I can tell you briefly. We have uh, one answer here again. Ellen and Nicole say it contains. Uh, oh, where is my answer? Uh, yes, it says it leads to anemia. Yes, that's the perfect answer. Well done, Nicole. I'm um, glad to hear that. Yes. So, if you don't have enough of red cells, either because of proper uh, lack of proper uh, iron in your diet. If you're not eating properly, if you're not, not eating good uh, nutritious food, um, if you're only sticking eating bread uh, five days a week or seven days a week, uh, your hemoglobin count is going to go down. It also depends from person to person. If it's men, women, elderly, young kids, all our hemoglobins are different. Okay, um, but that's that's right. You need to have iron in uh, your food that leads to proper normal. Uh, production of hemoglobin. Anemia is a disease again where you feel tired all the time. Like uh, you, you feel lethargic. You, you feel that you don't have enough energy. Uh, it's because there's not enough blood in, in your system. So that's when you need to get checked. And if you need any supplements, that you need to take iron supplement. Yeah, con uh, contact your general practitioner. They will help you. Right. So did you know? Uh, that the production of new red cells is equivalent to the destruction of at least 2 million RBCs per second. So every second, about 2 million RBCs are dead, almost, if you think about it, okay? And new red cells are produced. Um, yeah, the red cells constitute one of the major components of our, our blood cells. That's a little trivia there for you. Okay, moving on. Um, Platelets. So I'm seeing only myself on the screen here. I press something, I suppose, but uh, yes, I can see you all there. Right, so uh, moving on to the platelets. Platelets are the tiniest of all cells. They are about one to three micrometers in size. Look at all the picture there. The round things um, are the red cells, the pink ones, they have no nucleus. And in between those red cells are little purple dots. Okay, those are the platelets. I, I don't know how to point them. Uh, can you see them? Is my pointer? Yes. Okay, these are platelets. These are platelets. And these are red cells. Oh, that's great. I should have used my pointer earlier on. Okay, a smaller size cell contains no nucleus. The cytop cytoplasm is pale blue in color, but then you can't see the blue color because it's got a lot of this pink or lilac granules, okay, that cover these platelets. Uh, what's their function? The main function is to stop the loss of blood by forming uh, a very important platelet plug. We will have a look into what that all about. So how does a blood clot? It's, um, most of us would have had little bruises or little cuts where, where we bleed and after some time the blood uh, stops bleeding. Why is that? Why does the blood stop oozing or it stops the flow of blood? because there's a mechanism within our body is amazing that it can stop us from losing excessive blood and also ability to recover as well. So blood clotting or coagulation is an important process that prevents excessive bleeding. Uh, proteins and plasma work together 
uh, forming a plated plug at the site of injury and prevents bleeding. There are two mechanisms that kind of uh, uh, that takes place uh, to stop bleeding. One is the primary hemostasis, and the second is the secondary hemostasis. And say, for example, you got a cut. So what happens is there's an injury there at that site. So what happens? All the platelets so come and aggregate closer to the place, and because of the collagen that is exposed there, the platelets bind to the collagen. And when the collagen binds to the platelets, they release sticky things. Okay, that's the primary. They, they liberate an enzyme called serotonin ADP uh, and thrombaxane A2. You don't have to learn that, but this is what happens in platelet plug formation. And then because of the platelets and they constitute the things that they release, they form uh, a plated plug with a fibrin. It forms a mesh, okay? Think about a fishing net with all this fish stuck in it. It's like that. The platelets are all stuck in that mesh and that forms a plug and seals the place and thereby prevents from bleeding. If you have excessive, excessive bleeding, if you have prolonged bleeding, if any of you, I hope you're not, hope not, but uh, please get yourself checked. If, uh, if you don't, if you bleed easily, if you have bruises all the time, uh, there's, uh, Maybe, yeah, find out, or if your friends have that, they might be having a disorder, a platelet disorder or coagulation disorder. Okay, let's move on. So, how does first aid help in clot formation? Okay, as pathfinders, uh, something that uh, we, we go out all the time and some of us have a cut or something like that, how, do you, how, how, how does first aid come to play? So what do you do when somebody gets a cut? You, if it's a small, uh, small cut, you arrest the bleeding by putting pressure and then cleaning it up and putting a bandage or a plaster. It goes. If it's a big cut, you kind of uh, press it down with, um, if you have first aid kit with sterile gauze, uh, prevent, stop the flow of blood and then um, yeah, tie it up and seek uh, help from your first aid helper. Or if it's really bad, you need to go to to the uh, to, to your hospital. So the answer is, it slows down and stops the flow of blood. And by applying pressure, it kind of helps clot formation by platelet and fibrinogen activation. Okay, so uh, back to the white cells. Okay, um, this is a part of your part of your worksheet. So you, of course, you can't do this, but we do this every day. Uh, when we get a patient's blood sample, we use the microscope and you see a slide there. Uh, that's a stain. It's a drop of blood put on a glass slide and a smear is made, uh, stained with a special stain, MGG stain, um, where the cells can be, where, you, where the cells take up staining characteristics. And then you can use the microscope to identify those cells. So we count about 100 cells. In 100 cells, we count how many neutrophils are there. Say for example, how many lymphocytes are there? How many monocytes? Literally count 100 cells. As you screen the cells from bottom to the top, you count all the white cells, okay? So when you, when you count, at the end we will say, oh, there are some 60 neutrophils, or there are 25 lymphocytes, there are five monocytes, there are three eosinophils or one basophil. That's what you do. And that's, call, that's called as the differential count. One Okay, I've got a question for you. So what is the most common white cell when you do in a normal healthy adult? When you count 100 white blood cells, what is the most common cell? If you're paying attention, you'll get this answer. Okay, friends, now that we've got a challenge. Um, what is the major or most common cell in a normal adult? adult. Um, we have one answer already, red blood cells. Um, does anyone else uh, have any opinion, friends? Let's hear from, from you who were quiet so far. Mind you, I'm talking about a differential count of the white blood cells. Within the white blood cells, there are five classes. So what is the major white blood cell in a normal healthy adult. And it, differ, it differs if a person is having a disease or some other condition, but this is for a normal person. Do you have any answers out there? 
Uh, it seems that apart from one person saying uh, red blood cells, we've just got another answer, neutrophils. Yes, I've got an answer there. So congratulations on that. So within the white blood cells, neutrophil is the more uh, major uh, or the most common cell. I told you it is about more than half of your white cells are all neutrophils. So if you, if you said neutrophil, that's right. I'm sorry, it's not the red cell. Red cell, of course, is the common blood cell amongst white cells, red cells, and platelets. But within the white cells, the most common cell is the neutrophil. Okay, I don't know if I have time to play this video. Um, so this is about a, a video showing how you collect blood. Uh, if you had the experience or the misfortune of going to a hospital uh, being admitted, uh, you'd have had your phlebotomist or a nurse or a doctor who would come apply a tunicate around your arm, um, around the anti-cubital fossa, um, clean it up with uh, alcohol, take a, um, a needle and a syringe, stick it in your vein and the draw blood, and that sample they send it to, to the lab for testing, okay? So to see if it's normal or anything abnormal, okay? Uh, well, I didn't download that video, so I'm not gonna a chance I'm wasting my time here, but I'm. Uh, but you can always look up um, phlebotomy on YouTube. You 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 can come across videos where they show how they collect blood. Okay. So the other re requirement for you is to uh, visit a medical laboratory. Um, unfortunately, we are in the pandemic. Your clubs will not be in a position to take you out on a field trip to a hospital and to a to a lab. Um, but I've taken a few pictures of my workplace that I can show you. Uh, what we do uh, in certain places, okay? So as any organizations, our hospital has got labs. We've got different types of labs. Ours is a thousand bedded hospital. It's um, a, a reference tertiary hospital. It's very busy as well. So the first place, of course, you have the reception uh, where we get all the patient samples, uh, namely blood, body fluids, feces, patient's urine, uh, swabs, and tissues. All they come in through the reception. So our staff in the lab aides in the reception would take all the samples, sort them out, label them up and send to different departments or different sections within the, the labs. So what are those different sections? Now, this is my workplace. It's called hematology. These big uh, instruments that you see are the Sysmex analyzers. They are top of the range and are excellent uh, in, in, in technology and uh, modernization. Um, they help us do all the blood counts using these instruments. Um, so in hematology, we deal with the disorders of the blood, blood cells, and the, and the bone marrow. Okay, that's what we're concerned in, in hematology. That's, this is the place in biochemistry. Bang opposite to my uh, department is the biochemistry. Here, biochemistry explores the chemical processes within the living organisms. So you want to see the measure the proteins, the lipids, the organelles within the organisms. If they're high, low, potassium, sodium, albumin, uh, triglycerides, um, all those things, cholesterol, the measure in biochemistry. Okay, in microbiology, microbiology provides a service to support the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of infection. And this is the place where you find out what bug is there in you. If you have a respiratory infection, something with your respiratory uh, tract, uh, if it's an influenza or whatever it is, or if you have some uh, bowel disease, or if you have dysentery or dysentery or diarrhea, uh, you would want to know if it's a salmonella or if it's a shigella or it's an amoeba or, or whatever. So this is the place. Or if you're having viral infections, okay, it could be anything. There are a lot of uh, viruses. Um, so this is the place where the samples go for testing. Um, the other place is immunology. Now this uh, department provides service for diagnosis and management of patients with disorders of the immune system. Okay. Now the other place that I work on call is blood bank. Um, that's uh, the instruments that are used for grouping your blood. They, the instruments that type your blood as if it's O, A, B, or AB. Okay. And if you see at the crate below, um, these are the blood units that are used for patients' blood transfusion. If somebody has a surgery who's bleeding, if they want some blood, 
and these are the bloods depending on their types. If it's O, you need to give O blood. If it's A, you give A. If it's B, patient with B, you give B blood. If it's AB, you give AB, all right? So blood bank, again, provides transfusion services, including blood grouping, antibody screening, cross-matching, and issue of blood and blood products. Okay, so for, for us to have this unit of blood, okay, it's about a pint of blood, right? Somebody has to donate that. All these blood packets that you see in the gray crate are all from donors who have come to the blood bank and who have donated their blood. And these are all on voluntary basis, and these are done for the benefit of the patients. Okay, so or somebody has a, ro a road traffic accident, or they're bleeding profusely. Um, the clinicians in the hospital would want to transfuse that, that person with blood if they have a major trauma. Okay, so what are some of the exclusions where, where a, a person cannot donate blood? So say for example, um, if you have traveled to an endemic place with tropical disease, a, a place, say, a place that's got lots of malaria or other tropical diseases like filariasis or lower, lower infections or all those tropical diseases, um, you, you can't donate blood. Or if there's a big questionnaire, okay, you have that you have to fill up when you go to donate blood. So they'll ask you, have you been, are you a risk of AIDS that causes HIV? HIV that causes AIDS, okay? Or if you had cancer, or if you have hepatitis, or liver disease, or any other disease, you can't donate blood, okay? So these are the exclusions uh, as a blood donor. Okay, so I, I told you the antigen that is present on the red cell that is used for blood grouping is what produces our different types of groups. They are A, B, AB, and O. So if you look at the first one, the A blood group, it's got an antigen A on the red cell, okay? And now correspondence to that, in the blood, we have red cells and plasma. So what's in this? It is for group A, A antigen. In the plasma, the yellow colored plasma or the straw colored, hay colored, you have anti B, it's the opposite, okay? Uh, this is a very interesting of how God could make something like that. You have an antibody and you have an antigen, okay? That's a normal process, okay? If there, there is an antigen, an antibody attacks. So if an A person who's got anti B, but he's got an A antigen, his antibodies will not attack his own red cells. But if you give him the wrong blood, okay, there is trouble. Say for example, uh, next one is B, blood group B. What antigen does a person with blood group B have? B antigen. And what's the antibody in the patient with the blood group B? It's got anti-A, okay? Say for example, the medical scientist that's in the blood transfusion makes a huge mistake. So instead of, um, say the doctor orders four units of red cells for Mr. Mr. John, Mr. John Doe in a &E. He met with an accident, motor, motorbike accident. His limb um, has been badly injured and is losing lots of blood because his major artery in the leg, the femur artery, uh, it, it has been cut and he's bleeding. So he's losing blood. So they want four or six units of blood. And since it is a code red emergency, they bleep the scientist on call and say um, that I need six, it's a code red emergency, I need six units of blood. So our medical scientist goes in the lab and takes out instead of Okay, he typed it correctly as group A, but he picks six units of group B red cells and then sends them across. I oh, made a mistake. What happens? The A person is having A antigen, mind you that. And the B, B, B person or the B blood has got anti A. So what happens is your antibodies in B blood will attack the patient's antigens, A cells. So what happens? your red cells begin to lyse, you'll have a severe transfusion reaction. Okay, that, that can lead to major death, can lead to death. Okay, so likewise, uh, a person with AB and group has A antigen and B antigens. He's got two antigens. So this person with AB group do not have any antibodies. Okay, likewise, the, uh, the blood group O, they have no antigens on the red cells, but they have anti A and anti B in blood. I realize that my time is running fast. Okay, so 
apart from the ABO groups, they also have the red cells express an RH factor. It's, it, they could be positive or negative. So my blood group is, for example, O positive. When I, when I say O positive, my red blood cells contain O antigen, okay? And um, my RH is RH positive. Likewise, you cannot give RH positive blood to RH negative person, okay? I can't give uh, uh, my O positive blood to an AB, AB no, uh, an AB, uh, AB group cannot be given to an O, okay? Because you have antibodies to the antigens. Okay, let's have a look at this question here. A person with type AB plus has what group and what RH factor? The answer is there right in the question. A person with AB plus has what group and what RH factor? Any answers out there? Okay, friends. Um, let's try to find an answer. A person with a group AB positive mm -hmm. has what group and what RH factor? I invite the adults as well. Uh, yes, uh, Sunny, while, while our, our pathfinders are thinking, uh, you have seen that, that there are one or two uh, questions um, that were asked earlier on while you, you were presenting. Okay. Uh, what if you give them the wrong blood, uh, like they have A blood um, and you give them B blood, um, yeah. um, or what, what's going to happen? Um, so this is what, what was the question earlier on, but here is the answer. Uh, one person says, um, Ellen and Nicole, uh, AB plus, uh, and uh, Buntu and Yane say um, RH plus. So yes. which one is right? So the group is AB mm -hmm. and RH factor is positive. So it's RH factor is positive and the blood group is AB. So this person has both antigens A and B. Okay, so what happens in a major blood transfusion reaction? Okay, so we have always antibodies. Each one of us have antibodies. They, their main reason there is to attack. So if you give the wrong blood, they will attack the red cells. They'll kill your red cells. So in large numbers that they will hemolyze and you will get immediate fever, rising temperature, and you'll get urticaria and like reaction in the, um, on your skin and all that. Yeah, and your, your heart will go into tachycardia. Okay, and you'll go into an arrest. So to prevent that, um, okay, um, they would give steroids and uh, I'm not so sure about the, the treatment that will manage transfusion reaction, but I can come back on that. Okay, so they'll have to manage that. First of all, not to, if you're transfusing blood, stop right away. If they, the moment they see, uh, normally we have about 37 degrees temperature. If it goes by two degrees up, if they record your temperature as 36 and after transfusion, if your temperature goes up to 38 or 39 or 40 like that, and that's really bad, okay? So they have to stop the transfusion, send back the blood to the lab, and they have to investigate uh, what's wrong there and then manage the patient symptoms into going to a major uh, failure and death, okay? Okay. So again, what antigens are present on the AB positive? The antigens are A and B, and A and B are called as universal recipients. They have no antibody in the blood. Okay, so this is a chart. Okay, uh, yeah, so I hope you I have answered your questions. Let me see if you can get through my slides. Um, this is a, a chart. Uh, if you're A positive, O positive, B positive, AB positive, A negative, O negative, B negative, and AB negative. There are about one, two, three, four, eight types of blood groups that each one of us fall into. The whole world falls into these kind of eight categories. So each one of us, if I'm O positive, I can give my blood, I'm called as the universal donor. I can give my blood to anybody because I have no antibodies in my blood, but I have, uh, oh, sorry, I have anti-A and anti-B, but I have no antigens, uh, okay? So I can donate my blood, okay? And, and I can receive only from O and A because since I have A antibody, uh, sorry, what is it? I'm, uh, I have, uh, anti-A and anti-B antibodies in my plasma, 
I can't receive blood from A or B or AB groups. I can only receive from O only. The universal recipient like AB can receive blood from everybody. They can receive from A, B, A, B, and O. And O can donate to anybody, all right? That is the blood compatibility chart. Okay, so the question here was, stories in the Bible where blood was involved, I'm not gonna ask you. Um, I'm gonna say it out. Um, um, I have only a few minutes there, but we all know the famous story of the Nile turning to blood uh, during the, the showdown between Moses and Pharaoh. Uh, you remember the story of Joseph's brother who dips their coat uh, in blood and telling the father that uh, he passed away because uh, they're so jealous. You remember the Last Supper uh, where Christ's body was shed, uh, the blood of uh, the bread symbolizing his body. Uh, you remember the story of Jesus' side who was pierced on the cross, cross of Calvary where water uh, flowed out. These are the things, some of the things, um, please go through my presentation uh, from all these examples. These are some of the stories in the Bible that um, have talked about blood. And also during the uh, plague time during Pharaoh, they're meant to put their, uh, paint their door, uh, door post with blood so that um, the angel of death would not visit them. Okay, so what are the good habits to keep you, keep you healthy? You ought to heard about New Start. Okay, I'm not gonna quiz you on that. Most some of us know, knew it, New Start. N stands for nutrition, E starts for exercise, W starts, uh, stands for water, S for sunlight, T for temperance, A for air, R for rest, and trust in God. If you keep these eight principles of life, okay, th these are the main eight ways of healthy life. If you have good nutrition, not eating rubbish, okay, uh, what God has instituted and things like that, you're on, yeah, there's nothing, uh, you, you can't put a foot wrong if you have a good diet. Uh, at least 15 minutes of good exercise per day will hold you in good stead. Uh, that would clear a lot of diseases. Drink plenty of water, okay? Can't stress you enough. It, it could be cold months in the UK and Ireland and other places, okay? Or if it's very hot places, then you have to drink a lot. Even though you're in a cold season, make sure you drink at least eight waters a day, okay? Have sunlight. In this country, we are short of sunlight. I'm gonna tell you while I'm on the sunlight. If you are from, if you're not an, a native European, Okay, if you come from different parts of the world who come and made Ireland and UK your home, I advise you, please ask your parents, even you, to go on vitamin D supplements. Why? Because COVID-19 has a huge connection with lack of vitamin, uh, vitamin D deficiency and other factors. One of the main reasons is, is uh, vitamin D. Research has shown that. Okay, I, I've also been a part of the research. Um, but what studies have shown is that vitamin D supplement kind of a boost your immunity, okay? If you're coming from other places around the world, make sure you, your parents get prescribed for vitamin D. Temperance, be moderate, not be moderate. Cut out no alcohol, no tobacco, about caffeine, okay, and things like that, all right? Good habits. And air, don't forget to breathe, okay? This is what's gonna, uh, keeps you fresh. Get good rest, depends from person to person, but the minimum they say is eight hours. Put in eight hours, if you wake up tired, that means that you haven't got enough rest, okay? Um, I put my hand up, I don't sleep enough. I, maybe after this, I'm gonna sleep well tonight. Um, trust in God, please put your trust in God, okay? Faith is that that carries us through, okay? No matter what the situation is, okay? I have a little project for you. Uh COVID-19. If, if I can uh, just remind you, Sunny, um, we have a couple more minutes uh, left, so okay. um, I hope that you can be able to yes, uh, yes. wrap it up within a um, couple more minutes. Absolutely. I'm, I'm towards the end of it. I only have a couple of slides more. Okay. I'm not going to go into details of it. So I have one whole sheet there in the worksheet. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down what is COVID-19? How is it spread? Is there a cure? You ought to heard about the big companies, Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna, um, AstraZeneca and Oxford all coming together, providing vaccines. There is something in the horizon, but hope, let's see what, how, how, how it pans out. And why is it so devastating? So that's a project for you. I want you to write 250 words uh, answering those four questions that I put it on the slide for you. All right. Um, okay, the last slide here, 
what does the Bible say about cleanliness and control of the spread of disease? Um, please refer to Leviticus. It talks about um, how you need to keep yourself clean and be away from un un unclean things. Okay, and there you go. That's the end of my presentation.